G'day and welcome back to our Tassie Travels. So in this episode we're going to have a look at um, the Tarkine Drive or the rainforest section of the Tarkine Drive because it does do a coastal section as well. And after that down to Arthur River where we did the Arthur River cruise and then from there to the world famous Cradle Mountain. And uh, we're a little bit concerned about all the hype around Cradle Mountain but I tell you what it didn't disappoint. It is a spectacular place. So I hope you enjoy part two of our Tassie Travels. So today's adventure is the Tarkine Drive. Um, well, part of it. So this is the rainforest part of it. You can also do a coastal part of it as well. So I think it's about 120 kilometres today through the forests. And it takes you up into the hills and uh, through the wet rainforest areas. And uh, we're just going to have a cuppa before we get into our first rainforest walk. And then there's a sinkhole walk. They say it's an hour easy walk. So we'll see how we go with that one. But, um, yeah, it's meant to be beautiful. And we just found out today that uh, on the coastal side of this Tarkon Drive, there's a little town called Marawa down the Arthur River, and they've got a um, surfing comp going on down there today. So we're kind of lucky we didn't go that direction today. We're gonna to head down there on Tuesday. But anyway, we'll have a coffee here first, and then uh, go for a walk through the rainforest. So this little walk's called the Sinkhole Walk. It's about an hour in and back. And you don't have to go far from the car park to feel like you're in a prehistoric jungle. Just have a look how beautiful this is. It's just amazing. Pretty gorgeous. We've only walked 10 metres. <laughs> how beautiful is it? It's incredible. Gorgeous. Well, look through here. I mean, everywhere you look, it's just stunning. Just so stunning. we're almost back at the car park on the sinkhole walk, but there's just one problem. We missed it. We didn't see the sinkhole. <laughs> maybe, maybe we weren't looking for the right thing. Anyway. I was imagining like a Mount Gambia sinkhole. I don't think it's that big. I think it's relatively small, but big enough to actually see. <laughs> like not microscopic. Anyway. Beautiful walk. It was a stunning walk. So we're going to go and do the rainforest trail now. Hopefully we'll see the rainforest. <laughs> Maybe we just can't see the rainforest because all these trees are in the road. Beautiful walk, absolutely beautiful walk, but you're going to have to keep your eyes open for that sinkhole because it's pretty elusive. Okay, part two of our walk from this little spot here. So keep your eyes open, we don't want to miss the rainforest, okay? Still haven't seen a platypus yet. Every sign that you read around here is a platypus something. So there must be some around the region, but uh, we need to keep our eyes open. So this is a little bit interesting. There's a fallen tree here that some animals have been gnawing away at quite ferociously. I don't know whether they're trying to get the grubs or something that might live inside the trunk, but it's amazing. Look at this bit here. Hmm. Certainly made uh, short work of that. Uh oh, I'm lost. Must be this way. So here we go, Lake Chisholm is, they say, a fine example of a flooded sinkhole. So, um, we're going to get to see our sinkhole after so all. <laughs> so a lake. And it says that it's the home to platypuses. But I think we might have our timing wrong. I think platypuses are early morning and late afternoon critters. <clears throat> platypus? Platypus, one word. I don't know, I'll have to check the plural on that one. Platypus, I think it might be like sheep. Mm -hmm. One sheep, two sheep, three sheep, more sheep. Quite picturesque. This is lovely. Okay, got to put this camera away before I fall over again. Beautiful big trees here. Not sure what they are, but they're gorgeous. Here we go. What's this lake called? Lake Chisholm. Chisholm. Flooded it's sinkhole. Fine example of a flooded sinkhole, if you ask me. I wonder how deep it is. 
So we're just at Rapid River having some lunch and it's a little bit drizzly but is it dry on your side? <laughs> we'll have to sit over there. The river's pretty cute. This is the last of our trails today. This is the Milkshake Hills Lookout Trail. One hour return, three kilometres or something like that. And the sun is shining, which is a bit of a rarity. So Lisa's leading the way. She's got the backpack. Rightio, that's where we're going, up that hill somewhere. At least we've got a nice sunny day for it so green everything is so green it's incredible well we haven't had the hearts pumping today yet so this has been a good workout to the top of the lookout we're not there yet no. it's a little way to go we're not far so when was the fires through here 2016 so um probably can see all the barren Eucalypt trunks down there, all the dead ones. So 2016, Lisa's telling me, they, um, they had some big fires through here. Obviously knocked over quite a few of those trees. Okay, keep pushing on, it's not far now. Have a look at this, the sun is out. A rare occasion. It's a um, pretty specky view from the top here. <laughs> so this is definitely our last stop for the day. There's a uh, rocky arch down here, we can't remember the name of it, so we'll have to drop that in the title. But um, it's only just a short walk through the forest, and as the uh, afternoon is progressing, the sun's getting lower, it's just beautiful through the forest with the light. Oh, look at this. Quite stunning. You are well and truly going to be sick of greenery after our trip in Tassie. But I guess it offsets the three years worth of red dirt videos we've been posting prior to our Tassie, our Tassie adventure. But um, yeah, this is really specky. So there we go. It's quite specky. Get down here away from the trees. We are in Arthur River today and uh, we're going to do something we don't normally do and that's an organised tour. I don't know why we don't normally do them, probably because we're tight asses I'd say. No, just normally. Mm -hmm. So um, the Arthur River Tour is, um, has come with quite uh, high recommendations by a few people. So we thought we'd do it. It's only $110. $110 a head and you get morning tea and lunch, which is barbecue lunch. And a cruise on the river. So you're out from 10 o'clock till 3 o'clock. Holy oh, moly. It's a big day. Big day. So uh, we'll see how that goes. We're camping at the moment in the National Parks Campground. It's only about two kilometres from Arthur River. It's called the Manuka Campground. I guess we'll get a shot of the sign there. There you go. And look what else is out there. Sunshine. Sunshine. <laughs> it is um, actually lovely and warm this morning. It's uh, the last couple of nights have been the first couple of nights we've been actually warm. So we even sat outside last night, which was fantastic. There's lots of room in really uh, secluded, tucked away spots um, throughout the ground, but they're quite uneven that we found. And then there's one big grassy area where uh, most of the caravans seem to go because it is a little bit more flat than anywhere else. But there's toilets there, no showers. You can get water, but it's not drinking water. But it's uh, quite a nice little spot. And here is... And that's $15 a night per car. There you go. And uh, here's Arthur River. Here's Arthur River. Audio. We'll go down here, find a spot And there's the boat. And uh, right there. There she is. There's our fine craft for the day today. And what a beautiful day it is. Absolutely glorious day today. Check out this Volkswagen. How cool is this little thing? Volkswagen camper? She's a cracker. 
B Dub California. It's the Arthur River Cruises, the red boat. pushing towards Cradle Mountain. We've got um, four days or three three nights booked at Cradle Mountain at the Caravan Park, but we will probably stay a little bit longer. We'll find another spot to um, to camp just outside Cradle Mountain and do some more hiking. Because it looks like the weather might hold for us, which it certainly hasn't today. This is a classic Tassie day today. Have a look at this. It's, uh, it's not that cold, it's only 16 degrees, so it's not that bad, but it's Balmy. windy and squally and rainy and grey and miserable looking. So it's a great travelling day, great travelling day. We haven't got far to go today, only um, 260k? No, yeah, yeah 200, not even something like that. Yeah, 250k. So it's a pretty easy day really. Or a big day in Tassie. Okay, so we'll uh, push on, better concentrate on the road. Heaps of um, rumble strips on this road here. We found out that the rumble strips are to scare away the wildlife. So um, there must be hot spots where wildlife had been uh, hit by cars and they've got a heap of rumble strips on the road. And that's what it's for, it's scare the wildlife away. And apparently there's some places where they've got a big white pole and as your headlights hit that big white pole, it puts, uh, flashes a strobe and puts out a high pitched um, siren noise to also warn the wildlife that cars are coming so it's pretty clever but as we've discovered Tassie seems to be the roadkill capital of Australia there's so much dead wildlife on the road it's really quite sad but as we also discovered last night there's no shortage of paddy melons <laughs> there's plenty of them and we even saw a wombat last night that was a bit exciting rightio time to concentrate so just an update on the road between Arthur River and Carina. It's a shit of a road. <laughs> Admittedly, it is raining and uh, a little bit miserable, but geez, I don't think the car was this dirty when we are in the Kimberley even. <sighs> Hope we can find a hose when we get to where we're going, because we are covered in mud. But um, yeah, it's a pretty ordinary road it's just got a lot of potholes like a lot of potholes and um it's not corrugated at all you can but you you do average a really slow speed i think we're probably averaging 40 to 50 kilometers an hour that's about it you really can't go much faster than that because the potholes and they're good sized potholes um they sneak up on you so you've got to go nice and slow to um to make sure you can avoid them so it would be a beautiful scenic road in nice weather but uh, yeah it's not an easy road it's um yeah would I do it again no nah, wouldn't do it again but here's the uh, here's the view we just stopped at the lookout we just got to make a coffee and have a break so um we've been going now for just over two hours we've still got about another 10k to go um, the, to um, get down to Carina, but we're actually not going to go into Carina. We're just going to um, turn left and um, head towards Waratah. And then we'll make a decision. We'll find that free camp, see how muddy it is. If it's really muddy, then we'll just bail out of there and, and uh, go to Waratah and spend the night at Waratah. But anyway, so there you go. That's the road. It's a shit of a road. It was quite funny. We um, When we headed across, we thought, right, we've done almost three years and we've done a lot of dirt roads and a lot of dirt and a lot of dusty roads and we said let's just stick to the blacktop for a while so we can um we don't have to worry about the dust and the dirt <laughs> but i reckon i'd say 25 percent of the roads we've done since we left home have been dirt roads <laughs> so, 
but there's no doubt the dirt roads do take you to the most amazing places and if you stick exclusively to the blacktop you miss a lot so um so you've got to get on the dirt it's just weird i think we've had our fair share <laughs> now i have to wash this have a look how dirty this girl is anyway that's cruising what a mess i hope there's a hose when we get to where we're going <laughs> Well, after one of the most grueling drives I think I've done to date in the three years we've been traveling, and that was from uh, Arthur River down to Carina. And uh, boy, oh boy, it was a, um, did I mention it was a shocking road? <laughs> it, was, it was awful. It was narrow, it was full of big potholes, there was restricted visibility, it was raining. It was a gravel road, locked up the brakes um, quite a few times, sort of trying to pull up before potholes. Had the caravan trying to push me down the hill. <laughs> Had to go up hills in uh, first gear. It was um, really demanding drive. I don't know if I'd recommend it <laughs> to anybody, um, especially towing a caravan. It just adds a whole level of complexity to, to um, driving a road like that. Anyway, it's all over. We've only got about another 15 kilometres to go into Waratah, but we're going to stay here tonight. And here is an abandoned mining town. But there's not much left of it. In fact, we're just parked up in someone's front yard. You can see uh, just there. So um, there's still the old street markers, and the streets are still here in one way or another. The curbing is still here. But there's nothing left of the town. All the buildings are gone. There's very, very little. The only thing we can find are a couple of, um, look like sewerage points there. And then we found an old Telstra pit as well. And that's about all you can find that reminds you that there used to be a town here. But um, yeah, it's a great little spot, nice and grassy. And uh, so we thought we might as well stay here rather than pay 30 bucks at the caravan park. We'll be doing exactly the same thing, just sitting around, sitting out the rain. Um, there's also a really nice little stream, maybe only 20 metres away, not even. You might be able to hear it in the background. Um, and uh, so it's flowing through. We were going to get some water out of it, but with all the rain, it's um, quite silty at the moment, unfortunately. So we won't bother doing that. Anyway, so uh, we'll have tonight here at Luina, and then tomorrow we'll push through to Cradle Mountain. Um, and it's only, that's only about 55 or 60 kilometres from here. It's not far at all. But we'll have an early night tonight because I'm knackered. That was really demanding. That was, as I said, probably the most demanding drive. And it was only 200 kilometres, but still took us just over four hours to do 200 kilometres. So, uh, yeah, really takes it out of you. You're concentrating the whole time on the road 15 metres in front of the car. That's all, that's as far as you can look because um, there's just that many. Here's the beehives I was talking about. See, there's a row of them here. And uh, as I mentioned, as we've been driving through the mountains, um, there's quite a few spots just in the pullover parking areas and things where there's a whole heap of these beehives all set up. Um, but it doesn't look like there's much flowering at the moment, but obviously there is. But I'd love to get hold of some of this um, native honey. I love my honey. The bees are fairly dormant at the moment. There's not much activity around the mouth of the hives. I'd say the wet weather's kept them inside. The kookaburra's going crazy. So it's five o'clock. Look at that. Special time of the day. Rightio, I'm going to go and have a vino. In Cradle Mountain, at the Discovery Caravan Park in Cradle Mountain. Um, which is pretty good. They're doing a lot of work here upgrading the facilities. So um, it's a fair bit of under construction at the moment. But that's our little site just there. In amongst the trees. We were originally on site three. But site three is on about a 30 degree angle. We just couldn't get the van level by miles. So they thankfully they've swapped us over. But um, there we go. So we're just going to have some lunch now and a cuppa because it's pretty cool it's about eight degrees so uh we just at least is inside with the aircon going 
um, we're just going to have a cuppa and then we might go down to the um, tourist information center and just get the go on what's to do so there's tons of walks here so we'll just have to try and figure out which ones we're going to do I might restrict them to um, say 10k max I think just because it is going to be pretty chilly I think the maximum temperatures over the next few days is 12 degrees but you get that in the mountains anyway time to go and have some lunch and a cuppa so here we are Cradle Mountain so this will be the first of our walks here at Cradle Mountain so uh, we're just going to do a short one today we're just going to do the King Billy track 40 minutes around just to warm ourselves up which we need at the moment because it's only 11 degrees Lisa loves cold weather Feet are frozen already. Must be lots of wildlife here. <laughs> Have a look at the, the lawn here. Look at this. I don't know if you're going to see that. Lots of scat. We certainly don't need to go far before the wow moments start. It is really pretty. Look at this. Like you've gone into an elven world, something out of Lord of the Rings or something. It's just incredible. Just at the top of the trail, I was wondering who King Billy was, but uh, King Billy is this massive pine tree. It's just huge. See what sort of pine it is? It's King Billy pine. King Billy pine. Mm. Wow. Good. Thawing out. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? So here's something really interesting you don't see every day. This is wombat scat. <laughs> Two things about wombat scat. One is it's generally square in shape. And the second one is that wombats always crap. <laughs> up high and uh, we found out when we did the Arthur River tour why that is it because that's how they mark the territory by putting it up high if they if they poo in the bushes the other wombats aren't going to see it but by pooping up high it's there for the world to enjoy because they're very solitary and don't particularly like each other there that's exactly right so there you go interesting fact you just got to make sure I don't step in it now there it is is the Cradle Valley Boardwalk. Just wait, wait for the traffic. 12k run. This is just absolutely stunning. It is just beautiful. Stick some photos in. A bit too far away to see from here. There we go. Start of the circuit. So we're going to do the Crater Lake circuit. Two to three hours return. It's about seven kilometres, I think. This is Dove Lake. Cradle Mountain in the background. And we forgot our walking sticks. <clears throat> we never go anywhere without our walking sticks. I can't believe we did that. Anyway, we'll survive, I'm sure. Good heart starter. Great heart starter. Coffee would have been a better heart starter, but this will do. This is uh, Wombat Pool, this one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> she loves a bird. Getting close. Not far to the top now. bit of a hike, Lilia Lake and Dove Lake in the background and we just got to get up there. Sorry what's that? We don't have any clothes on by the time we get up there. <laughs> That'll have to go on a different sort of website I think Lise. So there we go, Crater Lake. We made it. We just got to make the decision now whether we Continue up to Marion's Lookout, which is at the top of that hill, 
say 30 minutes to get up there. We'll make that decision shortly. <laughs> okay, we're just looking at Wiki to we'll see <laughs> see whether that Marion's lookout is uh, worth the climb or not. And it seems as though it is. 30 minute climb, it's not too bad. Because you know when you get to the top, the view from up there, it's the same as down here except everything's just a little bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty specky view. There it is, the Marion Lookout wounds in front of us there. I don't know if you can see those people snaking up the path. Sure, right, we've done toughies before. Lake, and we're halfway up Marion's. Getting up there, not far to go now. Another five or six minutes, I think. Looking back down at Crater Lake. Whew. So that's the top of Marion's lookout, Mount Marion, whatever it is, Marion's Peak. Just gonna have some lunch now, sit in the sun, because the wind is very cold. Sit in the sun and have a picnic. Uh, didn't you bring your sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> it's in your backpack, in the front pocket. How's your sandwich? Yeah. Great spot for a picnic. Go. <clears throat> that was really worth the climb, that was beautiful out there. So we've got about an hour and a half to get down to the bottom again. 30 minutes on this bit and about an hour after that. Mountains, we're on our home stretch now. Only about another kilometre or so. Back to Ronnie Creek bus station. And it's all along the boardwalks now by the looks of it. Still a bit windy. Beautiful day. We're just going to come around the corner here and you'll see Cradle Mountain up in front of us. Glorious day. We got three quarters of the way up there yesterday up to Marie Marion. Marion's Lookout, which was a fantastic hike. About 400 metres worth of climbing, and uh, I think our round trip was about 700, uh, seven kilometres. Beautiful day, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do the boardwalk that runs from the ranger station up to Ronnie Creek, which is about six and a half kilometres. We did a little tiny bit of it on the first afternoon, and it was beautiful. So uh, we're going to do that today, give our legs a little bit of a rest. But it's a glorious day, not a cloud in the sky at the moment, and uh, maximum temperature is only meant to be 15 degrees, but with the sun shining, it's going to be, feel a lot warmer than that. And here we are, this is the village, the ranger station village that we're just coming into. There's a Peppers Hotel here. A few little gift shops and bits and pieces. And this is, um, there's a few walks that lead out from here. A lot of the shorter walks lead out from here at the ranger station. But most of the bigger walks go from Ronnie Creek, which is about another five kilometres up, or from Dove Lake, which is about another two or three kilometres past that again. And you can only get up there in the shuttle bus. That's it, yeah. The ranger station is as far as you can go in a car, although they don't encourage people to drive in because the car park is pretty small. Um, so most of the parking is way back down at the visitor centre. But we've discovered a little secret, so we can sneak in here. Have a look at the weather. It is absolutely beautiful today, or this morning. <laughs> it does change a lot. So, um... Yeah, it's going to be a lovely morning for walking, that's for sure. I'll just walk over here. This is the ranger station and the interpretive centre, or interpretation centre, I think they call it. And then the shuttle bus that goes up to Dove Lake leaves from just here. So this is what we're doing today, the Cradle Valley Boardwalk, five and a half kilometres through Cradle Valley, which is meant to be beautiful on such a magnificent day. 
So we're getting to the end of our trek along the boardwalk, Cradle Valley Walk. It is the most beautiful walk, absolutely stunning. Can't understand why not more people are doing it. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to a coffee. And that's it, the Cradle Valley Boardwalk is done. 6K, 6K, it took us just over an hour and a half, hour and three hour quarters. One hour and 47 minutes. No. There's a little one right beside the 47. Oh. <laughs> there you go, it took us just over about an hour and 47 minutes. To do 10 out of 10, it is a cracker of oh, a walk. Stunning. Absolute stunning walk really easy it's along a boardwalk all the way there's a couple of gentle undulations but it's a cracker if you're up here you have to do it that is a great walk Beautiful. coffee time so we're back at ronnie creek and uh, we're just going to have lunch by the babbling brook while the sun's still shining which is delightful <laughs> A little bit nippy yeah it's still 12 degrees i think they're saying or 13 degrees or something but in the sunshine it's just gorgeous anyway we're gonna have lunch and then uh we've got another hike to do that your picnic already laid out there <laughs> so here's a friendly cuddle one check out the eyes on it beautiful yellow eyes that's right mate not allowed to feed you a couple of stars here i thought quokkas were superstars Here's the vista over Wombat Valley. If you're looking for a wombat, this is the place to see them. Ronnie Creek, just do the walks at Ronnie Creek in the afternoon, after two o'clock they reckon, and there's wombats everywhere. They say about Tassie is you've got to be prepared for all sorts of weather when you're out walking, because it's gone from being a beautiful warm sunny day with the sun shining and uh, we're just getting around in t-shirts and not much else. And now the sun's gone and the clouds are starting to roll in over the top of the mountains. Lisa's already layered up. The temperature's dropped. It must be certainly down around 10 or 12 degrees now. Four degrees tonight. There you go. It's going to be a cold one. Last night was quite warm actually. So um, yeah, so you've got to be prepared. You've got to have uh, all sorts of layers that you can peel off and put back on again throughout the day because as the sun peeps out and disappears the temperature changes quite dramatically it's quite incredible well that was a big day 22,000 steps so i think we've done about the best part of 16 kilometers i think today walking which has been absolutely beautiful It's been, it's been, sorry, just trying to get across the bridge. Absolutely beautiful. You could not have wished for a better day today. It was a stunning day to walk. But now we're knackered. <laughs> but what we might do tonight, might come back to the resort here and have a pizza and a uh, big cold draft beer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, That's if we can walk after we get back to the van. Yeah, we'll see how we go. So, uh, but that, yeah, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. What a beautiful day. So that ends our three days of hiking here at Cradle Mountain. So uh, we're heading off tomorrow morning. Not 100% sure what we're gonna do yet. <laughs> we're just gonna play that by ear. There's a couple of spots we're gonna have a look at on the way out and we might spend a night in uh, one of those. We'll see how we go. Rightio, get home, have a shower and get ready for pizza and a beer. We had a lot of activity last night on the roof of the van. We could hear possums scampering around all night last night and um, I came out this morning I thought they must have come down a branch to get on top but 
I don't know if you can see there, but there are no overhanging branches over the top of the van. So I can only assume they climbed up the rope. That's the only other way they could get up, unless they managed to get up onto the box and then climb up the, the arm and on there. But And then they were around, they, there was heaps of possum poo on the ground here this morning, so they were around for quite a while. But something interesting, I just opened the bonnet of the car just to put the auxiliary battery on charge because we're not doing a lot of miles in it at the moment. And there's footprints all underneath the bonnet. Have a look at this. You can see all these footprints here. And then over on this side over, over here as well. Footprints just there. I'll just change the angle there so you can see it. So footprints just there. So I have no idea what it was or what it could have been. But if you think you might know, drop us a comment and um, let us know. I'll just put my thumb in there so you can see just relatively what the size of them is. Hmm, very interesting. So um, yeah, so a little bit of critter activity. I mean, they're way too big for mice. I don't know what else they could be. Well, there you go. You can see on top of the battery terminal here as well. On top of the battery. Just move my, my hand. So there you go. There's a mystery. If you think you might know what they are, drop us a comment. Let us know. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And here's a little sneak preview of what we're going to get up to in episode three of our Tassie Travels. Catch you later.